Hey, hey, guys and gals, it's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose, and we are back today with another edition of Farm and Simulator 2015. So we're back on Paradise Hill, and something absolutely tragic has happened. Uh, I got on the server today uh, to record a little video, and I was going to do uh, some dairy setup and set up the dairy operation. I got on, I got everything ready to go, and I noticed the server was really, really laggy. So I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to restart the server. It, maybe, you know, it just needs a little refresh. So I logged out of the server, restarted the uh, the whole thing. And when I came back on, it's 620 in the morning. This is where we began yesterday at. Um, a little frustrated now. Um, this is actually prior to where I had actually started yesterday's video at because I got the fertilizer tanker set up over here. So something really, really hinky is going on. I um, I went through and I looked at all the logs and everything to see if there wasn't a backup log from when I finished the recording and went and sprayed everything else. But apparently something went on with the server. It didn't save everything from yesterday, which I know I logged in. I know I saved everything before I got out um, from the recording uh, yesterday. So... I don't know. I've gotten hosed on this whole deal. So anyways, now I've got to go back and respray all the fields. And um, yeah, I really don't want to do that. And that's not what I'm going to do in this video today. I'll, I'll end up, I'm actually recording this uh, Thursday evening before the live stream. So I'll end up just doing the, the spraying and the live stream and, and get it done. But today we are going to set up uh, the, the dairy, as I said. And um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to work on today. I have gone in and purchased 50 cows uh, to go ahead and get us started or 50 heifers or whatever you want to call them. And uh, so we are ready to go with that. Um, so let's pull on out of here with this uh, here, our tractor. Which in order to do that, I'm going to have to tab out of the game and tab back in because... Uh, I have this stupid glitch with Logitech to where if I tab out of the game, do something and tab back in, half of the time, uh, my steering wheel and, and throttle quadrants don't work. Um, so I'm sitting here hitting the accelerator to pull forward and uh, it just ain't going. So uh, anybody else experience that? If you do, let me know. Um, it could be worse. It could be completely broken. I know other people have had tremendously bad experiences with the latest Windows 10 security patch, which for me made my audio system completely go haywire. Uh, for others, uh, they completely lost uh, the use of their G27 and their Logitech profilers. So um, it's affected everybody differently. Um, and I'm really glad I didn't have that happen because I really wouldn't have wanted to, to deal with that. There's the sprayer that we purchased yesterday and, uh, it's still sitting over here in the middle of nowhere. So kind of funny that happened, but anyways, we're going to run over here. We're going to grab the, uh, forge wagon and go get some TMR and take that over to our lovely ladies. And uh, start getting them fed so that we can get some milk and uh, we will get to going. So anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody is off to a good start for your weekend. Uh, if you live in uh, Florida, I'm sure it's a wet, nasty one. Though, uh, like I said, it's still funny. People calling me up going, uh, what are you going to do with this hurricane? It's deadly. Are you evacuating? Or I don't even live in that area. Uh, I'm on the western side of Florida, not the eastern side. And, um, yeah. But regardless, um, you know, somebody asked me, did one of my family members lives down in the Melbourne area. And uh, we were having this whole discussion about it because... One of the family members wanted to evacuate and the other one didn't. So, um, the, the, uh, one of them just left and left the other one and was talking about how bullheaded the other one was. And I was like, well, you know, I gotta be honest with you. I wouldn't have left. 
Um, it looked like it was going to sort of not be that big of an issue. I mean, it's a huge storm. Don't get me wrong. And if it hit head on, uh, it would be absolutely deadly and, and it would cause some damage and everything. But to be honest with you, most of the houses in this area are built to withstand the wind. Um, it's, it's more flood that you have to worry about. And if you don't live right on the water, you don't really have to worry about it as much. And, um, like I was telling you guys, I, I, I'm far enough away from it uh, that I won't have any issues. Like if we had one come in here, I'm far enough from the water. I don't have to worry about the, the waves and the, and the water. Now, my condo is a whole other story. If we get one head on, my condo is you know, going to take a lot of damage. But the house here is not an issue. And you know, we'd be having a hurricane party. I'd have friends over drinks would be flowing we'd be having a good time um and then you know when the lights went out generators would kick on and go from there as well so um most people most locals are prepared for the storms um so it's not that big of a deal for us all right so we're going to dump a little tmr out here start getting that in most of the ladies are out in the field right now doing their feeding and then uh, we'll come back around now my buddy Cody he's a completely different story uh, he lives on a boat in the Fort Lauderdale area his family moved down there and um, they bought a big sailboat and they live on it they had to pick up stakes and move and uh, get going and get out of town because uh you know the house the boat is their home and um so they pretty much operate on the premise that if a storm's announced and it's going to be in our area we're going to go ahead and relocate um and get out of dodge and get to safe harbor um regardless of whether it's confirmed to come in our area or not because it's better just to go ahead and react and you can always bring the boat back but you don't you know you can't always if you wait too late you can't get out and um so they are already gone and out of there which is hilarious i watched this i don't know that it's hilarious it's sort of sad i watched a a, a news report about a family that had moved to South Florida to live a, on a boat and they were all distraught because they weren't able to get their boat out because they weren't able to find a marina to put it in and all this other stuff and it's like again your your whole idea for moving there is to live on a boat move there and live on the boat and so that you could pick up and go out and do things whenever you want to and and it's not that big a deal. You're not tied to any of the landlocked stuff like that. So to me, it's pretty simple. When If you're in that situation and a storm goes up and, and codes uh, a perfect example of that, and his theory is, look, as soon as they say one's in the area, we're getting out of here. I got kids to think about and I got my house, you know, my boat is my home. And uh, it's pretty simple to sail away and get away as long as you, you know, it, as soon as as soon as they uh, say something's coming in near. I mean, you can react and you can get away from it and then it never even come in. But who cares? You, you went on a little sailing adventure for a couple of days with the family and um, no harm, no foul. Um, so he's got a great attitude about it. It's like, OK, well. Let's go for a sailing trip. And uh, for this other family, maybe they'll learn that and um, in the future. Uh, when they say there's a stormy area, uh, just get up and go. You can always come back. Now they're living in a hotel room with their boat moored up and who knows what's going to happen to it. sad sad times and you go ahead and uh if you ever do own a boat in an area like that 
A good rule of thumb is always have a safe harbor planned out at a time. We, um, uh, up until, you know, this year, well, last year, middle of last year, I, uh, I had a boat that I would have had to have worried about. And I still do portage other people's boats, but we, um, <laughs> We basically operated under the whole thing of always have a backup plan. And so I always paid a lot of marinas. You can buy hurricane insurance or hurricane portage, which basically says, okay, in the event that there's a hurricane, um, if I've got a boat that can be taken out of the water, um, if I have a boat that can be taken out of the water, um, I'm going to pay you a yearly insurance fee that just says, if that event comes, I've got a spot in your marina where I can store my boat. And uh, I don't need it any other time. I only need it when a hurricane arises. And, you know, you pay that fee and you may never use it, but it's just like auto insurance or home insurance. You pay that on a yearly basis and then that way when that time comes you go all right I uh, I'm good to go and the thing about that policy is you can only you can't buy that policy once a hurricane gets into the Gulf uh, here uh, once they announce that a hurricane enters into the Gulf here the marina that I actually buy that from they cut it off they're like okay we're taking no more new clients because there's a there's a storm in the Gulf. They focus on the people who have already paid the policy and you know are going to need spots. Um, and then after that, it's like um, once they once they take care of everybody on the policies, then if there's any spots left over, um, they'll they'll portage people's boats out of the water and on a first come first serve basis. It's a uh, interesting little thing i thought i'd give you all a little insight into that today since everybody's talking about the hurricane being down in florida so yeah my boat would be taken out of the water and it would be put and strapped down um in a facility and my my current boat stays in storage anyways um basically when i want to take the boat out on water uh, now, I call them, um, when I want it in the water, I call them and tell them they put it in the water for me using this giant set of forklifts uh, that basically just goes and picks it up like a forklift would pick something up um, off a pallet or something. It just picks it up, they take it out, and they put it into um, put it in the water. And then when I'm done with the boat and I want it stored... I just park it in a particular slip and uh, in the morning they come with the forklift, pick it up and go put it into dry storage up on a rack and um, works out real good for me and they do a real good job of washing the boat and you know flushing it out and everything for me so uh, it just it lessens the amount of upkeep that I have to do or time that I have to spend messing around with the boat. But then again, I have a slip there to where when I want the boat uh, for like a week's time or a month or whatever, like during the summer, a lot of times I'll leave it in the water every day. And then, um, you know, periodically I'll have them put it up in the storage when I'm not going to use it for several days. I'll go ahead and have it taken out of the water and put up. But anyways, that's the way that whole thing works. But I don't have to worry about any of that because I don't live in South Florida. And I don't live on the East Coast of Florida. Worked in South Florida. Hey, what? Well, there are tons of boats down there. And it is a mad house out in the ocean. We used to run uh, operations down there, man. And uh, it'd be crazy trying to work in Florida. Alright, so we run across here and dump our straw off. And we'll just go ahead and deposit it into this thing. We 
And we still got to get a little water into this thing. So uh, let's go ahead and dump that out. So they've got straw. They've got TMR. We just got to get water on them. And uh, we'll have our dairy operations set up and ready to roll. Which would be good. We'll start getting some milk. And um, we'll start hauling milk over to the milk factory. There's a little bit of server lag. I don't know what's up with it today. Uh, I mean, I've had this server now for two, three weeks almost. Two and a half, three weeks. And um, for the most part, it has been really, really solid. And uh, very, very little lag. But there are some days, like twice, or twice I've had it where it hiccuped a lot. Uh, and today is the third where it's just no matter what I do, I can't get it to really lock in and be good and stable. All right. But I have been pretty happy with Very Games. It's done, done pretty right by me. I'm liking it. It's really up between game servers and Very Games, uh, between who I get my server from. All right, so we need another water tanker. And rather than drive all the way over to the greenhouses and grab one over there, I'm just going to go buy a new one and have it over at this facility. Uh, and that way we've got one here. So, uh, slurry tanks, boat universal. We'll go ahead and buy one. And, um, yeah, we'll get the big one. And we're gonna put water in that, so we'll make it blue. And we are done with that. So we gotta run down to the store and uh, pick that up. So let's head down to the shop. So I did see, uh, I guess Devil Dog Gamer lives in uh, South Florida, down around uh, the West Palm Beach area. Uh, he did a video talking about his uh, experiences with the hurricane. It's, I guess it's something I've never really thought about as a YouTuber. And I use that term very loosely because y'all know I don't take myself too seriously with this whole YouTube thing. But. You know, he's got a big channel, and uh, that is his livelihood as far as YouTube. I really thought about that, what I would do if a hurricane came through here as far as getting videos out. But, um, yeah, man, he's uh, he's got to ride that whole thing with his power, you know, is going to go out, and then he might lose his internet. And I mean, that one thing he was talking about was power, and if he loses power, not being able to to uh, produce videos and everything he was talking about his computers but I, the other thing is if you lose your internet and um, you know that's something you got to think about because if the internet goes out he doesn't have a way to upload stuff he could he could potentially be in rough shape if if the hurricane does any kind of considerable damage because like when Ivan went through here Ivan devastated this area and uh, I mean ripped my parents house off the foundation and moved it three three blocks uh, from one side of the island to the other and actually was sitting in a lagoon um, and we didn't have we didn't have power back for several it might have been two weeks before we got power back here um, we certainly didn't have any internet um, and even after that you didn't like you didn't want to live here it was nasty with all the trash and everything and everybody did a great job of cleaning up but it was not a place you wanted to live uh for at least a month or so it, it was pretty rough and uh major metropolitan city it's a little bit different but i mean we're a little tourist town and it just whew, it devastated this area I mean it was it was horrible bad and it was this time of year when it hit it hit maybe second week of October I think was when it came in can't remember exactly it was right before the shrimp festival here and um, 
which is towards the end of October. So, alrighty. Let's roll out here with our water tanker and we'll go back and give our ladies a little bit of water. But yeah, if I lost, uh, if I lost internet and everything, I'd have to be leaving. I'd have to go somewhere else if I wanted to post YouTube stuff. Of course, I'll be honest with you. If, an, if a hurricane ever hit here and uh, it did devastation and we lost power and everything else like that, the last thing I'm going to be doing is making YouTube videos. I'm going to be loading up all the farm equipment and coming on down to the beach with it. The front loaders and everything are coming down to the beach and I'm going to be clearing sand out of you know, off of the roadways and things like that and helping out the city as well as uh, helping out my neighbors and probably make a little bit of money off of it like I did during Ivan. I think I've told you all that story about uh, loading up some bobcats and coming down and uh, clearing sand and making money doing that during the hurricanes. And um, so, yeah, if, I, if, if we ever did take a head on strike, I wouldn't be on YouTube for a while unless it was just showing some videos of the cleanup operations and everything for you guys. But it would be, uh, it would be something that I, I would be too busy. Deer and Ivan, we we like they kicked you off the island every night at sundown. The National Guard would come around and uh, they would escort you off of the island, and. So we would be back on. You couldn't get back on until 6 a.m. And there would be a queue of vehicles um, sitting ready to go at 5 a.m. to get back on the island of contractors and people wanting to get on here and get work done. And, um, yeah, we would start 6 a.m. and we would run nonstop the entire day until, you know, whatever time it was for sunset. Usually it was around 6.30 seven o'clock and um by the end of the day you all you wanted to do was get a shower get something to eat and get to bed because you knew the next day was going to start bright and early so uh you wouldn't you wouldn't catch me doing any videos i would be i would be too wore out and too busy you know for me at that point i was doing um we would clear sand all day long and at some point we would go around and try to wrangle up some new work like we go around and talk to other p people who needed sand cleared and try to negotiate with them and a lot of times i'd have to follow up with them in the evening with telephone calls because um like the be condo associations homeowners associations and things of that nature uh where it would be like okay well i gave you a quote on it and then i'd still need to call them back and uh and follow up with it a little more server lag hitting right there. Man, I was thinking about live streaming tonight, but if this server's uh, kind of hinky like this, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because that was a big time stutter right there. Crazy times when you go through a storm like that, though. You gotta you gotta balance a whole lot of helping friends out, helping neighbors out, but at the same time, you know, don't miss opportunities to make a little money. There's another hiccup. Oh man, come on, server, behave. All right, full tank of water. We'll roll over here and feed our ladies with it. We'll get them all hydrated and hopefully they'll start making us some uh, some liquid gold little uh, milk money I haven't put the stop milk mod in because I'm typically on the server so I don't have to worry about you know on, a, on the public server I never know like how long the server is gonna run uh, before you know it hits midnight or something like that and there might be people on but um with this one since there's not too much activity on it and usually i'm on here uh when you get late into the evening so i'm not really right now i don't have the stop cells thing on but i can pick the milk up if i want to so 
Um, that's all good. All right, so where would you think the water trigger is at? Front side or back side on this? And can I get back side without any cows getting in the way? All right. Of course, the moment I come in here, Bessie the incredible translucent cow wants to come and walk through the equipment. Thank you, my dear. Oh, wait. Nope. Uh, uh, let's back up here. See if we can find a trigger spot for this. There it is. All right, so water is not accepted here. What is accepted here? It's a trigger for water. There it goes. But is it going in? I don't see water going in though. Wait a minute. Let's turn our inventory on. And let's check. Water, water, water. Nope, no water. So that's what looks like a water trough is not taking water on this side. Uh oh, oh. Watch the parade go by. Hello, ladies. How are you? Move. And look, here comes the brown. Uh, all right, I'm just, I don't like running over the cattle, but sometimes you just have to when they act silly. That is sort of shallow to be a water trough to come to think of it. So that might not be the water trough when I look at it and comparing to the profile of this other one over here. So I guess that's a feeding trough for like grass or TMR. This here would be, uh, be water I'm guessing. So let's pull over here. Trigger, trigger, anywhere trigger. Oh look, I'm being sandwiched here. No trigger on this side. Seriously. And some more server lag. Hey, it's just not my day on this server. Alright, so let's roll out here. And we'll make one more turn here. See if we can get on the front. And find our trigger on the front here. Water trigger, water trigger, water trigger. There's a trigger. And there goes the water. All right. There we go. Now we're getting some water in here. So we'll get the dairy cows filled up. And they will be ready to rock and roll. So as soon as we get some milk produced, we can explore the whole uh, homogenized milk thing again. Uh, which we did a little bit of that on uh, Graceland. The facility here is a little bit different. So I, uh, I took a look at it the other day. I haven't quite figured it out because there's multiple points to put. I mean, like, it's not just one Milk Max machine. There's multiple Milk Max machines and multiple drop-offs and... So I got to look at it and see how everything works out on it. But we'll explore it together and see how it goes. And um, we'll continue on. Oh, that cow glitched out really bad back there. That was sort of fun. There's another huge lag spike. Still, my connection to the server is fine. It's just something on the server having issues. Uh, the server itself is not healthy today. Let's I'll give it one more restart and um, if that'll clear it up, but I don't know. Alright, so that's the maximum amount of water for 50 cattle. 
for uh, six days, so that's good. And we are out of here. So at this point, they should be fed and watered enough to produce milk. And I, well, we should be good to go. I don't really ever put the grass in there uh, or the uh, or the silage in there because I find you don't need it. Um, you really just need the TMR, which I call the Holy Trinity, and um, and a little bit of water and some straw. And at that point, you're good to go. Okay, let's rock around here. And we'll put our trailer up. I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the water trailer. I guess I'll put it right there next to the water tank. And we'll back it in here right behind it. So right there, I thought about putting them all back there towards the back a little bit, but this seems like as good a place as any. We'll turn in a little bit. There we go. There we go. I like a soul. And leave it right there. Just don't want it sticking out, so we'll just kind of put it back in the weeds a little bit. All right, so that'll get the dairy operation up and running and uh, start producing us a little milk. So hopefully uh, the next time we'll be able to uh, get a trailer and head over to the Milk Max facility and take care of that. And that'll uh, hopefully be on our next agenda. The next things that we need to do also is mow a little grass and uh, start stockpiling some grass up. And like I, like I told you guys, I want to cut the skirts on the fields and uh, do it that way. So that's probably what we'll do in our next video. Um, but we'll do that next time. I might do a little grass mowing in multiplayer with uh, Chris and Hemi using the um, using the old 8600 over there. And that would be fun. Grab the Zern head, put it on there, and just mow grass and blow that into a, a trailer. And, uh, and be able to uh, do it that way. I believe if you do it that way, it comes out as grass and not as chaff. I could be wrong, though. All right. Well, that's it for today. We are done uh, as we've got the uh, the dairy set up. And I'm going to go check on the server and see if I can figure out why it's lagging out a little bit. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Of course, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, it does help me out quite a bit. And uh, some of these videos are a little bit shorter just because I'm trying to get a couple of videos a day out. And so since I'm doing two videos a day, I'm trying to do like a farm sim video a day and something else content wise. So while I'm trying to do that, I'm just going to do some, some of the videos may be a little bit smaller. Uh, if it's something where I'm doing a harvest or something, those will be longer videos. Uh, but like if it's something like setting this up or doing a little grass mowing or whatever it may be, it might be shorter videos. And then, uh, and then we'll do the longer videos when we're doing some bigger task or something like that. But, uh, the shorter videos, it, um, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit done every day and, um, and do some, get back to doing the daily videos as well as doing some other content on the channel as well. So I hope you guys are enjoying it and, uh, we will see you guys back in the next video, if not in the next live stream. So until then, as always, stay safe, have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. 
Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And of course, I am trying to get to a thousand followers on Google Plus, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.